Shortly after midnight on July 17, 1918, the course of Russian history was changed with one act of brutal violence. Tsar Nicholas II and the Royal Romanov family were executed on orders from the revolutionaries who had taken control of their country. The Romanovs' rule over Russia had begun over 300 years earlier, during Russia's Time of Troubles, a 15-year period of dynastic confusion and foreign invasions. Mikhail Romanov, the 16-year-old son of Russia's religious patriarch, was ultimately chosen to take the throne in 1613. From there, the Romanov line continued and, in 1894, Nicholas II took power. But Nicholas was not the most capable of Russia's czars, described by contemporaries and historians as weak, submissive, and insecure. He only chose advisors who didn't pose an intellectual threat, leading to questionable decisions throughout his reign. In 1904, Nicholas started a war with Japan after refusing to negotiate Russia's further expansion into Asia. Japan decisively won the war. The next year, workers in the capital marched to protest unfair labor conditions. Imperial soldiers fired on the crowds, killing hundreds and sparking the failed revolution of 1905, which caused the deaths of thousands more. Through all of this conflict, Nicholas was still supported by the love of his life, the Empress Alexandra. The couple had four daughters and one son in succession, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, and Alexei. While loved by her husband, Alexandra was viewed as an outsider by her own people. She was German by birth, and her first cousin was Kaiser Wilhelm II. And like Nicholas, Alexandra only trusted a select few advisors, but mainly the infamous mystic Rasputin. And by easing the chronic pain of their hemophiliac son Alexei, Rasputin gained a prominent place in the Romanovs' inner circle. In September 1915, Nicholas left Russia to personally take command of the army on the front lines of World War I, leaving his wife to oversee the government's day-to-day -day operations. Alexandra was ill-equipped to govern a country at war, where wages were depressed, food was unaffordable, and industrial workers were abused to meet wartime quotas. To make matters worse, Alexandra gave Rasputin a formal role in government. He was allowed to hire and fire government ministers at will, angering the rest of Russia's nobility. Meanwhile, on the front, Nicholas and the Russian army suffered defeat after defeat. By November 1916, the country had lost 1.7 million troops to the Great War. The Russian people had reached their breaking point. First, in December 1916, Rasputin was shot and maybe poisoned and maybe drowned by a group of disgruntled noblemen. Then, on the morning of March 8, 1917, thousands of Russian women took to the streets of the capital to protest the government on International Women's Day. By midday, 100,000 women and men had joined the march. The protests continued for days. By Saturday, March 10th, more than 250,000 protesters forced the city to shut down. Tsar Nicholas, still commanding troops in Europe, wired his generals to fire on the mobs. But when given the order the next day, Russian soldiers instead turned their guns on their officers. By Thursday, Nicholas II had abdicated the Russian throne. His palace was overrun by revolutionary troops, ending 304 years of Romanov rule over Russia. The family was initially placed under house arrest at the Alexander Palace, south of St. Petersburg. But the new provisional government wanted the Romanovs out of the country. So they asked Nicholas's first cousin, King George V of Great Britain, to take them in. At first, the king accepted, but then changed his mind after realizing just how unpopular the Romanovs were with both Parliament and the British public. In August of 1917, the Romanovs were moved to Tobolsk in Siberia, where their situation continued to deteriorate. In November, Vladimir Lenin and his Bolsheviks seized control of the government. They had a much more hostile attitude towards the former monarchy, expelling many of the Romanov's servants and restricting the family to a diet of army rations. The next spring, the Romanovs were moved to their final location in Ekaterinburg, to a building called the House of Special Purpose. On July 17, 1918, Nicholas Romanov and his family were awoken from bed shortly after midnight. They were told that counter-revolutionary troops were approaching and that the family had to move into the basement for their own safety. The Romanovs and four loyal servants obliged. Several were wearing clothing with precious jewels sewn into the seams, which they had smuggled with them throughout their captivity. Once the family was in, the basement room was sealed, and Yakov Yurovsky, their chief executioner, informed them they would be executed. 
Nicholas could only respond with one word. Shto? Kurovsky and his men opened fire on the family, killing Nicholas and Alexandra. But some, including the children, survived the initial attack. The jewels lining their clothing had acted as armor. The Bolsheviks finished them off with bayonets and gunshots to the head. Yurovsky had the family buried in two separate unmarked graves off the side of a local road. The first grave wasn't rediscovered until 1979, the other until 2007. The Romanov family has since been reinterred at Peter and Paul Cathedral in St. Petersburg. In July of 2018, Ekaterinburg commemorated the 100th anniversary of the family's execution. More than a century after their deaths, 100,000 pilgrims attended the ceremony still mourning Russia's lost royalty.